Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's not that kind of class. Um, so, very first time we're recording on the screen. If anything goes wrong, YouTube, I'm so sorry. Um, we should be able to see all of this. On Friday, we looked at this little program and calculated the square root using this, this uh, newton raphson method. And um, this is the official answer. And we got to pretty much exactly that. So we have some kind of epsilon that's really, really small. Because when we get close to zero, we may get very, very close, but never exactly at zero. And the computer may not be able to tell that we're at zero and we want to stop. So that's why we say we have a tolerance, an epsilon, which we're prepared to tolerate. And um, this is really t squared, our guess, minus c, which is the target number we want to take the square root of. Um, it's really the difference between t squared and c, but for convenience we use t and c over t. And then we also multiply the epsilon by t because in some cases, um, if t is large, we, we don't want to go that far. We prepare to tolerate bigger tolerances, bigger discrepancies. So as soon as the absolute value, the distance between our target and the actual square root is less than or while it's greater than or equal to epsilon times t, we're going to carry on. Every time we simply use this formula that we kind of derived after a lot of effort, and we print the um, approximations, and let's just take the square root again. So here we go. These are all the calculations we made. This time it took much longer. It's funny how it stated the small values on the left-hand side of the curve. Is it still on here? Of course not. Yes. And then suddenly it jumped to the right-hand side. And then it, from the right-hand side, it approximated down to the square root. Today we're supposed to talk about, let's see. So today we're supposed to talk about um, I apologize for the horrible looking schedule, but simply the screen size. Four loops, and you've read these pages, three pages, must have four pages, um, about four loops. But I'm really going to talk about something else, because um, I want to give you more quizzes, and for that, you need to know about string manipulation. So we're going to quickly talk about string manipulation, and we get back on the four loop bus. I just want to switch to student mode because I don't mind if you see all the secret stuff, but it's just neater. Um, so I've put up all these quizzes. Um, sometimes there are mistakes in the quizzes. Um, don't be afraid to report those. But if there are and I correct them, I have to delete the whole quiz. So everybody who tried the quiz, their answers are deleted. So you may have to retry, just double check that it shows that you've tried all of them, if you want. If they're not obligatory, they don't count for marks, they're simply for exercises. And I'll try to add a quiz a day for the rest of the course. Well, maybe. But I want to add string quizzes. So we need to learn a little bit more about strings. So, um, let's see if I can figure out how to work this projector. So the screen recording might show this, but we'll get back to that in a second. If you have a purple and maroon book, unfortunately <coughs> it's not in there, because those stupid people left off the last chapter. The big, who has a big Apple book? Yes. Please put the light on the Oh, maybe. I'll think about it. Um, <laughs> why? This is triggering your epilepsy. <laughs> it's not flashing. <laughs> um, the maroon book does not have this. this is, at, in the blue book and this orange book here that you can buy, at the back there is a list of tables. And we've seen these kinds of tables before, as you can clearly see here. <laughs> uh, align everything, otherwise it's not, it's obviously not aligned. 
feedback, make me play around, zoom out. Hello, hello, hang on. Don't panic. That's kind of clearish. Thank you. <laughs> so we actually know this math list that's given here, and we've been using it a lot. We've said math.abs, math.max, math.min, sign. And that's fine. We can handle those because they're just like school. Instead of the function being called psi, <coughs> we now have to call math dot sine of some angle, and it will give us a sine of that angle. It's a little different because the sine, this um, argument, this value that we pass to sine, actually has to be in radians and not in degrees. Did you study radians at school? Yeah, yes. Yes, and no. Good. Okay. Did you study gradients at school? Yeah. How many gradients in a circle? 100. How many degrees in a circle? 360, obviously. And radiance is, what the hell is this? Oh, it's a fan. It's going to get hot. <laughs> um, and radiance, there are two pi radians in a circle. If you don't know what they're for, don't worry. But they're really useful in maths, because it means that we don't have to make certain manipulations. And it's all the same. Who cares how many there are, as long as we know what we're working with. This math, what we call a library, actually has functions that will convert radians to degrees and radians and degrees to radians. So if you're stuck with degrees, you can always just call this function. Or just do it yourself. If I have degrees theta that I want to convert to radians, I multiply by 2 pi and I divide by 360 and then I have the radians equivalent. This is not at all what I want to talk about, but this is the starting point. These are <coughs> operations we can call math.max, let's say. But today we want to manipulate strings. So we have to look at a different little library in here. And once again, the Maroon book doesn't have this, but that's kind of sad. Oh, it looks like a bad. Oh, man. Look at this. <coughs> Loads of string operations that I can use to manipulate strings. At the moment, I can only do one, two things with strings. I can assign a string. I can say, um, let's start a string. Oh, I'll just do it in here. Edit string fun. I'll just steal the previous one again. String fun. At the moment, we only know two kinds of things we can do with strings. We can declare a string, which is easy peasy, and give it some value. And the other operation I know is that I can add strings, I can concatenate them. So I can say string greeting is, oh no, that's supposed to be name. <coughs> Hello plus Yaku plus name. And we know that it will concatenate name and hello. But I want to do more. I'm a very kind of ambitious person. And I, I want to do more with strings. And in fact, it's really important that I'm able to do more with strings. So um, I know I can't subtract. In fact, in this case, we know that won't make any sense. I can't really divide these strings by each other, anything like that. So really, the only operation I have of the usual operations is this plus. But just like there are functions, math.sign, math.max, that I can call to get extra math operations, there are these functions in that list that I showed you that you can get to, or use to get to do extra things on strings. If you don't have the book, you are in luck. Because Java is a very large language, but very well documented. So if you ever need to find a list like that, for anything in Java, you can always just type Java API, and I didn't need to type the 8, but we're using Java 8, so 
Is my internet open? Oh, okay, so it's just slow. Really slow. Okay, fine. And this first link says Java API. That's what I want. Uh, not what I wanted. Uh, that's fine. And then these are not libraries, but sets of libraries. You kind of have to know that string sits in java.lang, java.math, java.lang. And now I'm in the list of libraries. So I'll go down to the string library, which is what I want to use, string. And it'll give me a few examples, but more importantly, a list of all the operations I can, uh, here we go, code, point at, compare to concat, and there are loads of them. Operations I can use, perform on strings. <coughs> so instead of just plus, I can actually do something like replace first, which will replace the first occurrence of something inside a string. We're not going to look at all of them, but we're going to look at some. So let's have a little look through this list. Uh, do I want to switch back the whole file? Or do I not? Well, let's do that. Let's do that for now. Okay, so I'm quickly going to write down the list. We'll read, but I haven't read, but um, we'll use them one by one. So um, right at the top, it just says string, <coughs> string s, which I don't want to talk about now, but which you will talk about in the um, second semester. Not even this course, but in the next course. And while we talk about that, I'm going to make a little list here. Okay, so the first function, it says that, is length. And open parenthesis, close parenthesis <coughs> means it doesn't take any arguments. It's not like sign of an angle. I don't give it anything. It'll give me something. It'll give me back an int as it says on the left. So that int tells me what is it going to send back, what kind of value, and that's the name of the function, and sometimes I have to pass it in arguments, operators. If I don't give it anything, how does it know which string I want the length of? So these kinds of operations are written in a special way. If I have a string that I want to determine the length of, I'm going to write greeting dot and the function. And it will apply that function then to that string, greeting. So let's, let's Greeting.length is an integer, so I can put it inside an integer variable, or I can use it inside some kind of integer operation, or, as the case is today, I can simply print it. Okay, what do we expect it to print? Well, hello is five characters, yaku is four, space is five, that's ten, and comma is 11. So, let's see if that works out. Java C string fun dot Java. Uh, going to compile? Oh, really? Okay. Not going to compile? <laughs> Don't know? Don't care. <laughs> Don't understand the question? <laughs> Your apathy is... Oh, I just don't care. Okay, right. So, compile's fine. Run. So it prints the greeting and it prints 11. Excellent. Okay. So now I've accomplished my little task. I've told you that if you want to perform one of these operations on a string, you write the string the name, variable, expression, and dot length. And we can use this in many ways. Is Yaku a string? Yes. yes. 
So I can write dot length to call the length function on the Yaku string. What will that print? <laughs> okay. This operation, this. Oh, I can't turn it down though. Don't add volume. This operation has precedence over plus, so it won't print, it won't concatenate high in Yaku and then cal calculate the length of the whole string. It'll take Yaku's length, which will be 4, which is an integer. Java sees I'm trying to concatenate or add a string to an integer and says, can't do that. I'll upconvert the integer 4 to a string. Slight feedback. And it'll say high comma 4, I think. Let's test our theory. Compile, run, aha. But we know how to get around that. First do the concatenation and then take the length function. Oh, didn't compile. Okay, that's fine. That's what I wanted. I didn't want high Yaku. I wanted to concatenate these strings. Four characters, high, comma, space, Yaku, and the overall length is eight. Okay. Everybody happy? Okay, excellent. Let's go a little faster because I'm going a little too slow. Um, let's look at these other uh, these other functions. I can um, call char at, which will give me one character from the string. It is going to send back a char. So a char variable or a char value and not a string or you know, anything else. So do I know how to work with charge? A little bit. We'll get to that. Remember, the only thing we really know about charge is that they're in single quotes, they're not double quotes. A single character in single quotes is a char character, and if I put double quotes, it's a string. Right. Substring. Oh, excellent. I can take a substring in a string, I call it substring. Contains. I can check if a string contains another one. Starts with, ends with. Check if a string starts with and ends with another string. Uh, let me just write all this down. Char at substring contains starts with ends with. Okay, so all this stuff is easy peasy. Index of get a set back an integer, which will be the position in the string of the second string p. So if I want to find where P occurs in greeting, I can call greeting dot index of and P, and it will tell me if P occurs in the greeting or not. What happens if it's not there? So I will send back minus 1. Tell me that there's no such position. But if I do find it, and let's say it's at the start of greeting, Java will send back zero, because it counts zero as the first character, the position in the string. Okay, so index of. Right, let's just switch back and do a little, um, a few exercises. Okay. I write, you tell me what's going to happen. I want... Result? Zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five is the comma, so this will show comma. Okay, substring. I have to tell it where to start. Let's say at um, position 3. And I have to tell it where to stop. So it's going to stop at one position before the position I now give. So that's 0, 1, 
Alice 2, 3, 4, 5. So I want to start here at this L. That's 3, 4, 5, 6. And I want the first two characters, my name, 7, 8. And the C will be in position 9. And I don't want the C. So I'm going to say from 3 up to before 9. Okay? Contains. I have to give it another string to ask if my greeting contains a certain value. So let's go for how. And let's also put something that's not in there. Low. Low. Starts with. Start with. Does it start with hell? Yes, I think I want it true. Does it start with heaven? No, I think I want to false. Okay, this is a lot. Let's go through it. Let's just see what we think our program is going to print. Um, line 8 will print the greeting, so we want to see hello, Yaku. Line 9 is greeting.length, so we said that's 11. Yaku.length is 4. Hi plus Yaku.length is 8. We said the char at 5 is a comma. That's the uh, substring. 3 to 5. Oh, yeah, I wanted low jar. Um, does the string contain hell? Yes, so uh, true. Does it contain low? False, because it contains small l low, but not big l low. Big l low. Okay. Uh, does it start with hell? Yes. So true. Does it end, start with heaven? No. False. So this is what I want to see my program output. Uh, of course, it's not going to compile like this. So I'm going to put all of these as a comment. Never you mind what I type there. Sometimes I want to comment a load of lines. And unless you know the secret magic code for your editor, it can be it can be tedious to put slash slash in front of all of the lines. So there is a different kind of comment that you can do in Java. No slash slash. Um, slash star. If I write slash star, then Java will consider everything that follows to be a comment. I can write anything I want. This is for people who are reading the program. I can write anything here. I can write illegal statements. Java will ignore all of that. And when I'm done, I put a star slash, and it will close the comment. And now, what comes after this closing of the comment is again part of my program. So everything from this slash star up here, <coughs> down, oh, my mistake, I apologize. Another mistake. Everything from line 25 to line 37 is a comment. And Java will just ignore this. Um, this kind of comment is useful. It's called a block comment. If you have to comment out a whole block of code that you don't want, but it can also be useful in a different way, in the sense that if I wanted to add a note for myself here that this will print 11, I can't write that. Java will complain because the system that out the print line has an opening parenthesis and then something I want to print. But then comes a comment, and the whole of the rest of the line is a comment, and I can't, I can't find the closing parenthesis. So, if I really wanted to do this, and sometimes I really do, um, I could use the star slash. So that only this part... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There we go. Right. You can't even see that. But only that lightly gray part is commented out. That's a comment for Java will ignore because it's written for humans, and um, Java won't compile it. But then it'll carry on compiling with the closed parenthesis after the fact. 
Okay, right. This is our expected output. Let's compile our program. Clearing the screen. Run. Did we make some kind of horrible mistake? Hello Yaku, 11.48, comma, low jar, true, false, true, false. This is not expected comment. <laughs> Take it out of here. Okay, fine, good. <coughs> so we can use these functions, which I agree is, must be overwhelming if you've never seen them before, um, but they're used a lot. Because a lot of programs do string manipulation. Almost all programs do string manipulation, because people in active programs, they do not want to see only numbers. They want to see text, to communicate with text. And we've used string communication a lot. <coughs> we've printed messages like, are you crazy? And all these strings. And having finer string manipulation is important for going forwards. Okay, fine. So I've looked at these functions. Oh, I didn't do ends of and index of. But ends with is exactly the same as starts with. It asks, does the string end with a certain uh, other string? Let's do index of. And also, um, do we want to keep... No, we'll keep that. So, system. No, let's do something else. Pause. I want to take the greeting. I want to find index of... Oh, what string will I look for? Let's say echo. If pause is minus one, <coughs> then we're going to write echo does not appear in greeting. And otherwise, let's say, echo <coughs> appears at position plus P, oh, plus pause. So I find echo inside greeting and I put it in pause. And if pause is minus one, that's Java's word telling me it couldn't find it, and I'll print that message. Otherwise, I print it appears at that position. Um, where do you want it? To, where should it appear? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we expect an eight. Good. No, we don't expect an eight. Do we? What do we expect? Yes, echo appears. We can find that out in a second. Very good question. It'll be in the exam. What will it print? What will it print? What will what print? The computer, of course! It's a question. What, you, what will it print? This <laughs> As opposed to... Uh, <laughs> the question I had is, if you were to ask it where it's like the L, for example... Yes, as I'm doing. The first, it only yeah. takes the first occurrence of it. Are you saying or... Are you telling me or I'm asking asked, me? So in the word, hello... Right? Yes. It, it will tell you 0, 1, 2. Will it give you back the value 2? What if I'm just an imposter and I just don't know squat? <laughs> In some sense, I am. <laughs> there are many things I don't know. But, of course, I know this. Yeah. But I think it's best to illustrate, to teach you how to do these things, especially in an exam situation, where you'll be seeing this again, by, um, <coughs> by doing what I would do. And I'm simply running the experiment and see if it prints... 0, 1, 2, two. or 0, 1, 2, 3. You say 2, but... I think 2, yeah. yes. I think 2, 2. But two. No, I think 22, 2, 2. I'm going to go to hell. Okay, I'm just kidding, of course. Oh, mistake. What's wrong? It didn't print 2 or 3. What's your name again?
Yes. What's wrong? You have to tell it where to start or which one to look for. Maybe it knows that there's two occurrences of it. Like it How would it know? <laughs> Don't tell him the answer. Look, he robbed him of his innocence yeah. and opportunity to learn to discover for himself. So, Justin, as you know, are you taking this course? I'm taking it. Are you in this course? Yes. <laughs> I'm just asking because it looks so fresh and new and innocent. So, as you know, if you don't, you're doing the course, I, I was, absolutely you know, but we must read these messages. It says, in line 30, there is an error. Variable pass is already defined in method main. In line 30. I can't do this because pass has already been defined. So I can't tell Java to make two variables, both containing integers, both called pass, because it won't know which pass I'm talking about when I talk about pass in that line or there. So I can't redeclare really pass. I either have to give it a different name or just overwrite its value by putting something else in pass. So it'll put this index in pass, check it out, maybe print it. It'll put some other index in pass, check it out, and maybe print it. Okay, so we don't know. We think this is two or maybe three, because there are two L's in hello Yaku. We compile again. This time it worked. We run, and it prints two. So it only finds the first occurrence. And if we wanted to find the second one, because sometimes we do, we have to wait for the camera, and. Um, then we can use this. I can't move the cursor. Ah, uh, here the cursor is. Uh, where is the double click? Yes. Then I can use this index of string, and now I give it an integer position, and it will start searching after I. I don't know if I believe that. <coughs> Let's start it out. It looks so exciting, enticing. Okay, uh, let's do the same thing, but this time say, look, start looking after position 2. Will it start looking at 3, or will it actually start looking at 2? You say 3, but how do you know? Maybe that description was ambiguous. Let's see. Compile. Oh! I don't want to confuse myself. Okay, right. That's what we expect, two or three. Good. So let's compile. <gasps> oh my god. Look at this. So Pos was 2, because that's where the first L appears. And then I asked it, find, in greeting, the index of L starting at position 2. But the book said, after I, look. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go that time. After I. <laughs> it does say after I. As if I couldn't see it. So the book is lying to us. Or we misunderstood. Maybe the book meant I in a human sense, where that's position one and position two and starting there. In any case, let's just make sure. Maybe don't insult the book. The book is holy. It's a, pretty much the best book for teaching Java. Okay. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm sorry, this is what happens now when I have a camera. So um, what I did now was to change 
the two to a three, and um, I feel almost as if it's cheating because I'm telling it where to look. But let's just see what it does. Well, it says three. Yes, I've just done both. There's the one. There's the other. In one line, sure, absolutely. Take all these lines and put it in one line. Long line, and they're all in one line. <laughs> Don't do this. I've killed students for less. Okay. Three sounds a little cheating. I don't like this. So I'm going to change all this. I'm going to look for O. And now I expect it to tell me that O occurs 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I want the one after 4. So instead of writing 3, which will again show me the 4, I'm going to write pos plus 1. The position after the previous pos. So I expect that to be a 4. And I expect that then to give me 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's see if this works. Damn, my time is almost done. I've got to quit. Uh, I've got to be quick. Excellent. So 4 and 10, which is exactly what I wanted. So I want to know if there's another occurrence of O, because I want all of them, apparently, all in one line. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Now I'm asking Java again, find me the position of pause after the previous position of pause, and I hope that it's going to say it does not occur again, it does not appear again. But this is a lot of code to duplicate. I don't want to necessarily duplicate this code all the time. I've just learned on Friday about this wonderful thing called a loop. So I can actually use a loop. I can say, find the first O. And while pos is not minus 1, so you have found something, while you have found something, say that it appears at position pos, and then find the next one. <coughs> and finally, when this loop is done, we know that pos is now minus 1, that's why the loop stopped. Because while pos is not minus 1, it will carry on. But once it's minus 1, it will stop. And I don't need all this stuff. So all that code has been reduced to this. Find the first position. While you have found it, keep on going. Say where you found it and found it, find the next one. And then finally, when you're done, say it does not appear again. Compile, run, okay. so it appears at position 4 and appears at position 10, and it doesn't appear again. One final tiny little thing, let's uh, change this greeting to hollow Joko. <laughs> it appears at position 1 and 4 and 8 and 10, and not again. So that's much neater. Okay, now to repeat all of this in Afrikaans. So, it's in the end of the day, we have four loops, four lists that are on your website. And we have a lot of people who are in the day, and we have a lot of people who are in the day, but all here are a string functions. And I will end up here with all the people who are in the day, and I will end up here with all the people who are in the day. Ik ga ook vinnig naar die laatste vijf kijkt woensdag. En dat laatste vijf is nog niet gepraat. Dat is nog bijna bijna meer op je website, die Java documentatie website, die Java API. Maar ons gaan niet naar de kijk. Zo is al dat ik oefen en ons terug kijk en ons lessen kan gebruiken om bijvoorbeeld al die voorkomsten van oe en strin uit te vertoon. Is daar enige vraag? Do you have any questions? Yes, Justin. 
Do you want to go through it? Do you want to check? The Look at it, yes. So do I. I in fact, it's now on this screen because I, wanted to, I was saying but didn't show that the web has all the, a longer, much longer list of functions. But there we go. Is there any other questions? Yes. Shh. Max. I did say that, but um, I <laughs> promise. Oh, uh, I'm going too slow. You must promise me, Noah, <laughs> that you are reading. Is everybody keeping up with the reading? No. Why not? The bottom part. That's the wild thing. Okay. If you keep up with the reading, I can go a little bit faster. But if you're not reading, I'm afraid that you're going to miss out a big plan. And then when the test comes, when the test comes, you won't be able to do those parts. Doing the quizzes is not enough. Um, none of the quiz questions will be in the test. The test questions will be harder and different. But if you can do the quizzes, you ought to do one in the test. Having said that, um, I'm afraid that the test will come, you'll all do poorly, and then I'll be blamed by my superiors for not being an effective teacher. <laughs> now, I can't pass all of you either, because I'm too good a teacher, and I win kind of awards. I have uh, friends in Switzerland where they have conscription, and you have to go and retake your shooting test every year. And what lots of Swiss men do is, they all keep guns at home, of course, but what they do is, they're very busy, and they hire other people to go shoot for them. And my friend in uh, Berenzona <coughs> had to fire the guy he hired to fake his test because he was doing too well. And my friend started winning medals. <laughs> and I couldn't shoot at all. So, uh, I don't want to be in that situation. Um, <laughs> You guys must please read. It's only three pages. I mean, you must be able to read. I know, but you've had different days for those. <laughs> it's never too late to go back and read them. They're still there. You must read ahead of time. Otherwise, you're going to be lost. We're going to speed up very, very soon. We must finish arrays by next week because you need them for the project. Um, I'll talk about the project on Wednesday. Okay, I'm going to stop now. I'm going to stop the recording.